My name is Matthew Klinsky. Today we're going to talk about the funding options for small businesses, specifically staffing firms, as a lot of biz a lot of people are starting their own business in the staffing industry. And so I wanted to go over the options for people who are looking to cover the payroll for temporary workers on contract assignments. So this is a very specific talk because it doesn't really relate to general business practices like a loan to start up a business, to buy furniture or anything like that. What I'm specifically talking about today is the funding you need to run your temporary payroll. So I'm gonna go through a first uh, an example just to make sure everyone's on the same page. When you have a temporary worker in the field, let's just say one temporary worker, and they work Monday through Friday last week, 40 hours, and let's say they're getting paid $10 an hour. You have to come up with $400 plus taxes uh, to pay the worker. So uh, week one, uh, you have to pay, let's just keep it easy, $500 to the employee. But you can't, you bill the customer, but typically they're not going to pay for 30 to 60 days. Our average at USA Staffing Services is about 45 days for our authorized, for the customers of our authorized dealers. Um, so $500 the first week. The second week they work and you have to pay another $500 because it's another 40 hour work week. You, in general, let's just say you're paying $500. Just This is just for one employee. Imagine if you have five or 10 employees out there, you just multiply it. Um, but five, uh, $500 a week, and let's just say it's times eight weeks, just to say that the customer pays in, uh, they say they're gonna pay in 45 days, but they ended up paying in 60 days. Uh, so times eight weeks, that's $4,000. So it doesn't sound like much, you know, if you're starting a business, this is maybe a cost of doing business and you're kind of planning for one temporary worker in the field. But you have to remember, you have to pay that and then the customer will pay just the first invoice. Uh, so this invoice, you know, this is payroll. And then the invoice is probably uh, like, let's say $550. Uh, so you make 50 bucks. Uh, but they're going to just pay the first week. So that $4,000 sits out there because as they make their first payment, you have another week of payroll, another invoice. So that re revolving loan or that revolving uh, accounts receivable that you paid to the customer, uh, you paid to the employees and billed to the customer, is going to be about $4,000. It's not going away. So you have to take the $4,000 out of your bank account, you give it to your employee, and then the customer will pay one invoice at a time starting in 60 days. Um, so that's how we kind of plan it. Sometimes the customers pay longer, but let's just do that for an example. Now, now you want to start a second employee. Well, you know the customer pays in, in eight weeks. So you know, before you start another employee, you need to have 4, 000, another $4,000 set aside because this is just for one employee. Now double it. So uh, you only make the $50 a week um, for the one employee out there. So you're putting out $4,000, but then you're going to get, uh, you know, $50 a week as your profit. Hopefully, uh, the customer pays within the, the eight weeks. So every time you start a new employee, you have to think about where am I going to get the next $4,000 to put this employee in the field. And so you can think of it as uh, 10 employees. Now, all of a sudden you need $40,000. Oh, one more that's at 10 employees. If you want to go 20 employees, well, you're going to go to $80,000. So some people who are starting businesses have 4,000. Not many people will have an extra $40,000. And this is just to get to 10 temps in the field. When you go to go to 20 temps in the field, you're gonna to have to think about 80,000 or more, depending on the pay rate and the bill rate and everything that goes along with that. So what, so this provides a very unique situation for staffing firms because of the delay the customers make. Now, if you find a customer that pays net 15, net 30, you want to make sure to sign those contracts as soon as possible. I've been doing staffing for 15 years. The average customer will sign a net 30, but they'll typically pay in 45 days. That's just average from experience, whether it's a recession or non-recession. That's pretty much a variable that doesn't change. Um, so when your funding options are out there for staffing firms, it, they talk about recourse funding versus non-recourse funding. So that's a topic I want to touch base on a little bit longer today. Recourse and non-recourse, really it's, it's, it's the distinguish between most funding options. It really falls into these two categories. And the, the truth, the, the simple approach to it is 
recourse, you're, you're putting a personal guarantee on it. Even if the business takes out the loan and the business is, it's in the business name, ultimately when it comes to recourse, they can take everything within the business and they can take everything from your personal guarantee on, on the loan. Non-recourse is a loan that they don't, they can't come after your business assets and they can't come after your personal assets. As you can imagine, these non-recourse loans are really um, for established businesses, businesses that are going to be around and have a proven track record. A lot of these loans are going to be bank-based loans. So uh, let me just start here with uh, uh, the recourse. and then non. So uh, there's a couple of main examples that I want to share with you. One is factoring. So you might have heard of a, a, this term called factoring. Factoring is when a lending company will buy the invoice from you, so they technically own the invoice and they buy, they buy it on a week by week basis. So this week they're going to buy the invoice, next week they might not. There's no real guarantee that they're going to buy it for every customer, but they do buy it and they give you a, they buy it at a discount. So they'll typically buy it at 90% of the invoice value, uh, which you have to take into consideration. I can do a whole uh, separate uh, from that standpoint. But um, um, factoring can be either recourse or non-recourse. But I would say that most of the time, uh, that's going to be uh, non-recourse because they're buying the invoice from you. As long as you're not lying on the invoice value, you know what what they typically have in, in kind of wording is that if you submit a faulty invoice or an, an inaccurate invoice, well then you're kind of responsible. But as long as the invoice is value, uh, you know, is a valid uh, invoice, typically it's going to be a non-recourse funding, which just means that they can decide which ones they want to buy. But if the customer doesn't pay, they're not going to come after you. So this is expensive. Factoring can be anywhere from, uh, I've seen, you know, 1.5% for 15 days. So at 60 days, you're paying, you know, anywhere it's a 6 to 8% of the value, uh, up to 10 or 12%. Um, so it's expensive money for that short term, and that's really 6% of the value of the invoice, not an interest rate. So you want to be careful, is it an annual interest rate over 12 months? Um, so in that case, it would be 1% per month or 2% for 60 days. Uh, or is it 6% per 60 days, which really means 6 times 6, which is 36% interest rate. Uh, so you want to be very careful of those interest rates and how they're calculating it from that standpoint. Uh, a line of credit, a traditional line of credit, is typically recourse. And this is going to be from a bank. Uh, and what happens is a bank, so in order to get qualified from a bank, you're going to have to have good credit history. You're going to also have to have, uh, you know, one to two or three years worth of financials. And you're going to have to have a good, you know, financials on your side too on a personal guarantee. Uh, so the line of credit is something that they're just going to say, here's $100,000, go ahead, use it like a credit card or revolving line of credit. And uh, whenever you, you, you pay it back, you don't pay interest. When you borrow, you pay interest. Um, so it is nice to have. However, most companies or people are only going to get twenty, thirty thousand dollar lines of credit. If you're if you have a lot of money in the bank, you might be able to get a larger line of credit. Uh, so in this case, when I was talking about the four thousand dollars per employee, forty thousand for ten employees, you really have to think how much money you can borrow from a bank, and would it be enough to cover your goals as a staffing firm? And then there's the asset base line of credits, asset-based lending. And in asset-based lending, let me spell that right, uh, is a, you know, most of the time a line of credit, but they use what your invoices are. They don't buy, so it's kind of a combination. Um, and this is typical, you know, this can be um, both as well. I've seen a personal guarantee given on both and, and, and non. So it's really up to the bank and the lender. Um, but in both cases, they mimic a factoring in that you can borrow a percentage of your invoice to pay that payroll. However, the difference is, is that you still own those invoices. So you get to manage those invoices, you get to call the customer, you get to really manage that whole process. Um, the difference with the factoring is that you sell that invoice, it is no longer yours, it belongs to the lender. And for that 
sell, they're going to give you a flat rate up front. And then the last thing, I guess, is just a traditional loan. And most of the time, um, you know, a loan is going to have some type of recourse. They're not just going to give you money and let you pay it back over three to five years. Um, so a loan might be, again, it's going to be a fixed amount, $50,000. You get it all at once. You can do whatever you want with it. You want it for payroll, so you have to be careful. You want to maximize the return on investment from that loan. And all of these, of course, have interest rates and costs associated with them. So when it comes to non-recourse, there's very few options. Almost all staffing firms have to buy, have to put on a recourse. Now, the way that USA Staffing is a little bit different is that we are essentially, we fall into this, this side of the program. Uh, this is our AD program. So our authorized dealer, let me make it right up here, even better. Our authorized dealer program for our authorized dealers is a non-recourse type of funding. So what that means is our authorized dealers, which we have about 250 authorized dealers throughout the country, they get to have the flexible workforce to help them grow, but they also have a, a source of non-recourse funding. So again, if, if the customer doesn't pay the invoice, the, the authorized dealer never has to pay back the money associated with the payroll. So that is a huge thing. A lot of our authorized dealers start from zero, go up to 10, 15, 20 temps in the field. They have 450,000 of a revolving account receivable. Business is great. And then a recession hits and customers don't pay. And so we had to pay the payroll. We're doing all the funding, but then we never go back to the authorized dealer and say, hey, the, the customer didn't pay, so you owe us $200,000. Uh, we're not going to do that. The banks do, the factorings do, the asset-based lendings can, uh, but, but we don't do that. And so we fall on the, this side of it. Now, it's a, it's a kind of a, a combination of a couple of programs because what we'll give you is a, a credit limit for that customer. So we give you credit based on every customer. For instance, uh, one of our customers has a $400,000 line of cre uh, credit limit. And so we know ahead of time when the customer's approved before the first day of staffing that you have $400,000 to play with. Let's try to manage the accounts receivable as a partnership, as a team. Let's get make sure that we're managing the accounts receivable so that you can maximize your temps. You can put a number, as many temps as you want in the field. You just can't go above that, that assigned credit limit. Just kind of very similar like a credit card. And so if the customer needs more temps, then they have to make payments sooner. And, and it's really easy for authorized dealers to go to the customer and say, hey, great news. We have a lot, you know, $400,000 approved. Um, let's get some temps in the field. But hey, in, in order to make the, you know, if you're asking for 10 more temps, I need you to pay your invoices a little bit sooner. And a lot of times we've had a lot of great responses uh, because they're offering such a great service to the customer that the customer is willing to pay, uh, you know, a little bit sooner. A lot of times our credit limits are initially 50,000, but it's only for one or two temps. And so we work with you as the authorized dealer. We work with the customer after that relationship is built up. Maybe we can get it expanded. But, but the important part to, to know is that our authorized dealer program kind of sits on this side, but it has a lot of the benefits of the recourse. We're able to expand to multiple customers. If you brought 10 customers, I could probably get you 50,000 or more on each customer. So now you're talking a half a million dollars of credit limit, whereas you would never have been able to get that from a loan um, or from a line of credit. And so it really gives the best of both worlds. If you'd like to learn more about our authorized dealer program, I'd love to talk to you more about it. Our team is ready and, and willing to talk and I'd love to explain more. Even if you don't want to join our program, if you have questions about recourse and non-recourse fundings, I'm always happy to look at contracts to give advice based on experience and help you in this journey to start your new business. Congratulations again on starting your business. I look forward to talking with you. Thanks.